Okay, uh, good afternoon, good morning, everybody. It's an, an honor to, uh, to talk to you all. And I have to admit, I, uh, I miss you all because uh, we are a distance and discussions uh, run in a different way than uh, I'm used to. But uh, so far we do very well. So let me introduce myself. Um, I am an advisor to the RTB project. Many of you know me from uh, different uh, and earlier meetings. And uh, today I do it from a distance. So I am uh, Hans van Doorn. I work for a private uh, breeding company, HFPC. We are a potato breeder and we have an RD department. Uh, we have a size of about 110 uh, scientist breeders and, and persons uh, daily active in, in breeding. And in that department, I'm leading two uh, important uh, departments, I would say. Uh, one group is uh, a phenotyping group. Uh, we have uh, about 140 different traits in potato that we uh, breed and select for and that we phenotype. And my team is involved in the objective phenotyping of those 130 traits with whatever principle. So a broad number of instruments that have been discussed already a uh, few times uh, or many Hans, times during the review. Hans, uh, yes, uh, you are not sharing your screen. Not yet, I, I mean. I'm not sharing my screen. Not That's yet. true. So I will indeed share my screen. Yes. But I was still given an introduction. Okay, okay, sure. Sorry. Uh, for myself. Sure. sure. And I can simply continue with my introduction and then indeed share the screen. Okay. Then uh, so let's continue. Uh, phenotyping is uh, the love of my life and I'm doing phenotyping already for over 30 years in many breeding clubs. And you've seen presentations in the past uh, about uh, our efforts in potato. Uh, the second team is evenly important for me and that is uh, what we call the quantitative genetics team where we make sense from phenotypes and genotypes to assist breeders. Uh, for the right crosses, the right selections, and the, why, the right modes of working in a difficult uh, crop with many traits, all multigenic, etc. So that is my background. Today I will talk to you from my uh, quality background and product profiles. And I've made a presentation uh, which I will like to share with you. And Hans, can you put your presentation in slideshow? Okay, thank you. Yeah, it's a slideshow now. And I start with uh, a further introduction of uh, the team of today. Uh, my dear uh, partner and assistant today is Christian, uh, who will help me out uh, later on after my presentation in the discussion and uh, uh, addressing the right questions to the right persons. And there is, of course, the broad team of the product champions that I have highlighted in yellow. Robert, Bussi, Hugo, Noel, Bonamule, Gerard, Delphine, Kefas, Ruben, Jan, Thiago, and Boni. And I hope that I can uh, ask or forward questions that are uh, relevant and need to be answered in the later discussion. So, to put things in perspective, I made a small presentation about product profiles. And to compare the product profiles in RTB and the state of RDR currently in, and our profiles in the company. And then we have some challenges to optimize product profiles, what I call to quantitative product profiles. Because the quantitative part is very relevant for breeders and to make the right crosses and to select for the right levels of those traits in all those families and all those crosses uh, along a breeding program. Uh, finally, delivering the right varieties 
that have the right combination of traits at the right level. And then they get adopted by consumers and end users. I have put the di disclaimer because I share information with you that is uh, confidential in the rest of the world. And I hope that you respect uh, the profile I share with you, that you take it for education and inspiration and own preparation, but that you don't start talking about it easily with what we call competitive uh, partners and companies in the world. If I look at the current RTB situation, the traits are identified through Work Package 1. And they are nicely listed in terms of words and priorities. It was an excellent job, and it gives a very nice overview of the traits. And a lot has already been mentioned about it. And you have a very pleasant situation that you know now which traits are relevant in all of the crops, where you should work on. And the challenge now is to translate those traits into uh, quantitative traits and try to find the optima of those traits in the different crops and in different profiles. So the traits are or will soon be further quantified in breeding programs. And you have in work package two and three, QDA panels and instrumental uh, standard operation procedures at low, medium and high throughput. And those are the instruments that you will use to translate traits in terms of wording and priorities into a scale uh, where you would like to end up in certain varieties and in certain combinations. So the product profiles are being listed as required traits and need to be expressed at these highest levels. And then they can subsequently be defined in breeding selection variety introduction and communication practices. And that is a real challenge. And you need to know, and you already know, that product profiles are not fixed. They will evolve and get optimized during their use in variety creation and adoption process. And it's very uh, many times already mentioned that that process is still going on and that you learn every new activity, every new evaluation, and every new survey, you learn more about product profiles. And what you also need to realize is that uh, product profiles and preferences evolve also in time. The preference of today may be totally different a couple of years from now. And trades that are important today may disappear in two, three years from now, and new trades will pop up. You should realize that. So you have to refresh profiles right only. So if you look at the, our profiles, then you could also have a look at the challenges for the RTB crops. There is a need to get the required traits defined and validated in the context of all genetic variation in breeding programs. Because it's obvious if you start studying traits in a limited part of your program, or a limited part of your scale, you miss essential information and essential feedback from the end users for that part. So it's very relevant to have the full range studied uh, at end user level. It's also relevant that the procedures where you measure traits are there at reference level, and that's often uh, wet chemistry level in the laboratory and at high throughput level because traits need to be measured at high throughput uh, for a breeder to do the selections and to study the families and to discover new variants or combinations of uh, traits. So high throughput and the scale are very important. The profiles need to be defined at desired expression level, like I indicated to you, because they, these levels match the end user requirements. And the quantitative product profiles uh, then can be applied in breeding and selection of the RTB crops. And in the 
bottom corner, you could see that there are targeted approaches and untargeted approaches. Many people give a, high, a higher value to targeted approaches than untargeted. But the reality is that quite some untargeted approaches uh, perform better than targeted approaches. For example, if you have a very good NIST calibration for a trait, uh, uh, sort of measuring and predicting the variation of a trait with 70, 80, 90% accuracy, then the reality is that you do not need uh, which traits or alleles give that contribution to the, the variance and the prediction of variance. Yeah, it may help, but it's not strictly needed. And uh, later on, uh, if you do that for genetics, uh, similar principles apply. A very good genomic selection uh, model is performing better than a targeted QTL a model that is explaining less of the variance. But that is a, a different story, not for today. Okay, so I hope I have given you a sense of the product profiles, their structure and their expression levels. And then Christian and I took the opportunity to give an overview, to create an overview of the current state of the art for the different products that have been reported during this review. And then uh, we have distilled some questions that we would like to discuss with you. So if you allow me, uh, I go to a couple of slides where I uh, give structure to the next discussions. So this is an overview where we have summarized what we call the perceived state of the art of the work package contributions to product profile development and their applicability per product. There's five work packages. And we have done it quite uh, high over, uh, on track, slightly behind, challenges to catch up, and major challenges in the, in the colors for the products uh, in the table. And the greener it gets, the better uh, the package and the, profile, and the profiles are uh, supported by uh, or consumer data or by instrumental data, by sensory data, high throughput efforts, then breeding contributions to what we call the uh, delivery of the right genetic variation for the activities in other work packages. And of course, the adoption trials and information obtained from those trials as a service to the other packages. And you see, uh, quite some variances between different products. You see that there are indeed challenges. Most challenges can be explained because Corona has been a game changer with serious consequences on quite some teams. And that makes the challenges even higher in the coming two years of the project. But this is what we believe is a sort of a reasonable overview of the current state of the art of all your activities. And the good news is that you have made very nice progress on average and that you are well on the way to reach uh, the final targets. So we made some observations. And the first observation is that the end user traits are well identified for all crops and all products. It's also uh, an observation that consumer and end user traits need to be translated in sensory attributes through uh, quantitative descriptive analysis and trained panels. That is partly well done, partly series delayed because of COVID and partly on the way. The attributes need to be become measurable with instrumental SOPs at laboratory level, at medium level, at wet chemistry level, and later at high throughput level. And those expression levels of traits and attributes measured on the quantitative scale need to be added to the product profiles to make them usable and applicable in the breeding process. 
and also for communication, of course. Some products ask or seem to ask for multiple product profiles, like we experience for potato, and that may be region or gender dependent or other factors dependent. It's obvious that work packets two and three have crop dependent. They are most challenged with respect to the progress and applicability of the SOPs for product profile development. And that is asking for a certain uh, method of working in the remaining part of the project and for a certain uh, approach to catch up. And we will uh, propose there uh, some uh, what you call tools to reach those targets. We see also, again, a crop dependent, an imbalance between trades that are currently measured and those that need or should be measured. And then with respect to what we call sufficient association to the prioritized sensory attributes and traits. Most traits and attributes are measured and developed on a part of the existing genetic variants inside breeding programs. And in the rest of the project, uh, probably it's challenging that the rest of the variation that's currently not studied is added to the activities in the different work packages, but also in uh, breeding programs and, of course, uh, ad adoption studies. So we have some suggestions and some observations for the teams that have delayed activity. And you could ask yourself, which consumer traits have real priority for QDA sensory screening and development of, of the SOPs at lab at high throughput level? Because if you work on the real priority traits, you get more focus and you may cancel part of the delays. So probably it's time to reconsider the focus in those programs and only take, give attention and effort to those top priority traits. The same is true for the biochemical and biophysical measurements. Are they associated to the traits and attributes? And do they deserve it to be continued or should they be discontinued? And then the question there is, of course, where to put the multivariate correlation bar? Because if you look at the, the presentations and the, the progress, you see quite often one-to-one uh, -one correlations, but not multivariate correlations. Yeah? You have to remember that most attributes can be approached in a multivariate way, and that a combination of measurements may do a better job than single correlations. So, that is a remark and recommendation I give to quite some teams in the Q&A uh, files. So the alignment and capacity and the functional role of measurements that may cancel part of the delays. You see quite often in different projects and work packages that the order of working is not at times optimal. The preferred order is sensory profiling first, development of instrumental SOPs after that, and then a high throughput version of those SOPs that perform in red chemistry. And sometimes you see a lot of effort in protocols and SOPs that are even not yet associated to the attributes. And then you may run the risk that when you have your shop ready, that it's still not correlating to the attributes and, and not really useful for that purpose. And this is just a reminder that working in the right order will uh, probably save you from a lot of disappointment at the end. And then there is, last but not least, the challenging synergy, we call it, between different products of the same crop. If you would merge in a creative way and use near spectra of raw samples for the prediction of multiple products, then you would enhance 
the critical mass and robustness of your NIST data. And you could predict four free, four plant, cassava products, free plantain products, two yam products, and two potato sweet products uh, at the same time with the same data set. So synergy and merging and consolidation can give you a lot more speed. And that is a clear recommendation, especially because you need quantitative uh, data for those product profiles. And the more you have, the earlier they are adopted by the readers. My last slide is suggesting uh, actions that come out of the evaluation of the last couple of slides. The first action is that we should create product profiles in terms of listing of the traits per category, and then you can use quality sensory, agronomic resistance, etc. Yeah, and that can be done, it should be done, and is already done by the different work packages. Bring together all the data from the different work packages, and then you may come close to the product profiles that I've showed you from my company as an example. And then the very next step is add the desired expression levels of those traits uh, to, in terms of objective measurements, and please obtain those measurements from the full variety range and the full trait range. And then those two together make a very useful product profile. So, because you are all not at the same uh, speed at this moment, for known reasons, there are some front runners. We identified boiled cassava, pound and jam, and matoke as uh, uh, most advanced in this respect, in terms of uh, sensory profiling and in terms of uh, chemistry and even high throughput. And those teams, can you make those product files as an example and inspiration for the other teams? Because once you have the desired example, the others can quickly follow and act accordingly. Those contributions can, of course, come from all work packages in a joint effort. And then you probably end up with that some required traits do not have an operation uh, or protocol uh, available yet. And then you can do what we did, put it as a work in development or trade in development. And that will remind you that uh, the SOP has to be finalized soon. 